Hi everyone, it's me, and today let's become a superhero with supervision. Let's go! Spider Man! Oh, Spider Man! How'd you do that? Uh, workout, ah. plenty rest, you know, eat your green vegetables. <laughs> eat your carrots too! That's what my mom is always saying. The more you know, I guess. Spider-Man. Hello Internet! Welcome to Food Theory! Hello Internet! Welcome to Food Theory! Hi! Let's start! The show that you should watch in a well-lit room when you're seated a healthy distance away from the screen. Just like mom always said, don't want you needing glasses after all. Or, you know what, just ignore all that. Yeah, that little bit of folk wisdom about the dangers of sitting too close to the TV actually dates back to the 1950s and 60s when cathode ray tubes actually did emit noticeable levels of radiation. So in case in point, there has been improvement and benefits. Sorry, there have been improvements and betterment of the television. So your screens have improved significantly compared to back then. So the dangers were less about losing your eyesight and more about growing a third eye. Anyway, here's another bit of wisdom that you might have heard from Grandma. Eat your carrots; they'll help you see better. In fact, they'll make your night vision better. This is one that I definitely heard a lot as a kid. And X-ray vision, night vision. In fact, it made such an impression to me as a kid who needed glasses that I would go to Ponderosa, which was the uh, local all-you-can-eat buffet at the time, and just mm -hmm. load up my plate with mountains of shredded carrots. No joke, I was just committed to being able to see better. And even though I'm not so worried about my eyes anymore, it's still a tradition that I've carried on, getting a plate full of carrots every time I go to any sort of, like, all-you-can-eat restaurant like that. But tradition aside, is there any truth to this, like, at all? Should people be canceling their LASIK appointments and instead be stuck in their fridges with carrots? Well, uh, yes and yes and no. You see, the truth isn't as clear cut as you'd expect, and the more mm -hmm. that you dig into the history, the more you realize that most nutrition advice we follow today is a weird mishmash of half truths, simplified science, and competing interests from like a century ago. In short, the next time someone tells you to go eat your veggies, you'll uh, probably want to show them this episode. All right, so where did the whole eat your carrots, they'll help you see better thing come from? I'd always assumed it was just one of those things that got passed down between generations that started with, like, a farmer out there in his fields, but nope, it's actually the product of a British information campaign that happened during World War II. Which is nearly a century ago. You see, between 1940 and 1941, Germany targeted the United Kingdom for a series of airstrikes, a bombing campaign that would come to be known as the Blitz, short for yeah. Blitzkrieg or Lightning War in German. At the beginning, Lightning. the bombings would occur both during the day and at night. There was just one problem, though, the Royal Air Force, or RAF. During Germany's daylight attacks, the RAF would give them a lot of resistance, tearing through the air fleet as German planes tried to attack the ground. As such, mm -hmm. Germany decided to change their strategy to focus more on air raids happening at night, all in an effort to give their bombers more added stealth. After all, it's going to be a lot harder for the RAF to shoot planes when you can't see them. Meanwhile, German fighters had no trouble finding their targets. They could identify British cities for bombing based on all the lamps that would get lit up at night. True, the brighter it is, that means the more light source. The more light source, that means more important the building is. So, boom! So, yet again, the British had to respond. This time, they issued something called the Great British Blackout, a mandate for all streetlights to get switched off, heavy curtains to cover all windows, and slotted deflectors to get installed into any essential lights like traffic lights or headlights, so that the beams would get directed downwards towards the ground. And while turning off all the lights certainly makes you invisible to planes trying to drop bombs on you, it also makes it a lot harder to see. As you might imagine, when people can't see, it means a lot more accidents. In fact, it's estimated that after the start of the war, in just one month, over 1,100 British civilians were killed in driving accidents alone. It became a real catch-22 for ambulance drivers. If you turn your lights on, you become a target. But if you drive without lights, you're at the risk of running off the road. Not only that, but there was a fear that the blackouts would lead to mass unrest among the British people. The government was just as concerned with the psychological impacts of the bombings and blackouts as they were with the physical ones. So, in 1940, the British government's Ministry of Agriculture released a statement saying that they had finally come up with a secret weapon to help the British people survive the blackout. We did it, guys! K 
carrots. Oh, carrots. According to their official statement, quote, if we include a sufficient quantity of carrots in our diet, we should overcome the fairly prevalent malady of blackout blindness. It gave people hope. It boosted morale by giving people a food that would carry them through the long, dark nights. But the carrot campaign had another side benefit. It really killed two birds with one stone because the British government was facing yet another problem during World War II, food shortages. The UK, as an island nation, relied heavily on food imports for things that couldn't be grown at home. Upwards of 70% of its cheese, sugar, cereal grains, and fats, along with over half of its meats, were all imported from overseas. Even the local livestock relied on imported grains to survive. So when your enemy has submarines stationed all around your coastline ready to sink any ship that pulls into harbor, importing foods becomes a lot harder. As a result, people had to get by on limited rations. To give you an idea of what World War II rations looked like, adults would typically get a weekly allowance of around four ounces of ham or bacon, two ribs worth of other meat, two ounces of cheese, two ounces of butter, eight ounces of sugar, and one fresh egg. And that weekly. That was to last them the entire week. But while people were getting by on a limited ration of meat, eggs, and sugar, you know what there was no shortage of? Carrots. They were cheap to buy and easy to grow, to the point yeah. where the government actually encouraged people to set up victory gardens in their own homes to grow vegetables like carrots. And what better way to transition your citizens to a carrot-based diet than by telling them it's some kind of wonder food that'll solve the other big problem in their lives, the fact that you can't see at night due to blackouts. To sell their people on the idea of a high carrot diet, the British government even came up with a mascot character. Dr. Carrot, the children's best friend. Along with his family, Pop Carrot, Clara Carrot, and Carroty George. Carrots wow. weren't the only crop to get this treatment either. They also had Potato Pete, telling people about how good he was at making soup. But the way the British government pushed carrots was just on a whole other level. The Ministry of Food released a series of war cookery leaflets, one of which was filled with carrot recipes. Carrot pudding, carrot fudge, carrot flan pies, carrot marmalade, and of course, carrot cake. Technically, there's evidence of people baking carrots carrot cakes as early as medieval times, but the dessert really didn't take off in popularity until, wouldn't you know, World War II. I mean, yes, case in point, mass popularity. It was really the perfect wartime dessert when A, you have to figure out what to do with all the carrots that you've been growing in the backyard, and B, the natural sweetness of the carrot means that you can use less sugar and stretch out those meager sugar rations. In short, the British Food Ministry's campaign was a massive success, and all of it was masking the other real reason behind it all. Yep, in addition to boosting civilian morale and helping to ease food shortage unrest, there was yet another, even more strategic reason for the hoopla around carrots improving your night vision. They weren't just killing two birds with one stone, they were killing three. And one of those birds was a secret bird that was stealthily hiding out in the background somewhere. It was all to cover up the real secret weapon that was allowing the British to see in the dark an advanced top secret radar system. You see, radar! Despite the initial success of Germany's nighttime raids, the Royal Air Force eventually did start to repel German fighters. Ace mm -hmm. pilots were shooting down dozens of planes, <laughs> even at night. <laughs> one famous pilot, John Cat Eyes Cunningham, racked up 20 kills, a whopping 19 of which happened at night. According to the World Carrot Museum, because there's literally a museum for everything, the <laughs> British Air Ministry pushed the fact that it was because of his carrot-rich diet. In reality, though, it was a new radar technology called Airborne Interception Radar, AI, giving pilots near-perfect night vision. Now, to be clear, Different AI, okay? Different AI. Right now, the AI that we can think of is artificial intelligence. Back then, it is more towards Radar existed in the years leading up to World War II. In fact, Germany had radar towers of their own at the start of the war, but not all radar is created equally. The entirely new innovation that changed the game was the cavity magnetron, an advancement in radar tech that was not only smaller, but also so accurate that it could tell you where a plane was in the sky within one meter. The British wow. didn't even share the secret radar technology with their US allies until 1940. So when you have a top secret device that lets your pilot see the enemy under the cover of darkness, how do you keep them from finding out about it? Well, you do a full-on propaganda campaign telling your people, and by extension the entire world, that your health ministry has discovered that night blindness can be overcome by just adding some vegetables to your diet. So, there you have it friends, the origins of carrots helping you see at night. So, technically speaking, this is a lie, but a lie that can, that helps people, that helps end the war, that it's a lie that is beneficial, and Chinese is called 商意的谎言, 商意的谎言, yeah.
a massive wartime propaganda campaign that covered up national secrets, boosted declining civilian morale, and gave people hope in the middle of extreme food shortages. Just leaves us with one question. Does it work? Sure, this was largely perpetuated by PR, but can carrots actually help your eyes? Does yeah, it look? kinda. See, night huh? blindness is a very real thing that has a variety of causes, some of them genetic and some related to nutritional deficiencies, specifically a lack of vitamin A. And some of it is more towards the environment itself. Lack of vitamin A can lead the cornea of your eye to get dried out, which can cause it to become cloudy. And that's a problem because the cornea is the very front of your eyeball, the part that all the light has to pass through in order to get to your pupil and hit your retina. Less light entering the eye during the day isn't a problem, but at night, it can make low light conditions look like no light conditions. Oh. And wouldn't you know it, but carrots are a solid source of pro-vitamin A. Not vitamin A, pro-vitamin A. Which is to say that carrots stimulate your body to produce more vitamin A. It's all thanks to the beta carotene inside of carrots. And uh, if you're wondering, yes, it's called carotene because it was found in high doses in carrots. It's actually what gives carrots that signature orange color. So yeah, carrots, as well as other yellow-orange foods high in beta carotene like squash, sweet potatoes, and cantaloupes, all of them are ways to avoid night blindness. Except, uh, you know what's even better than eating pro-vitamin A for your eyes? Eating actual vitamin A. Rather than relying on your own body to produce vitamin A after you've eaten some pro-vitamins, you can just find some animals that have already done the work for you and eat them. Liver meat from chickens or beef, egg yolks, certain dairy products like cheddar, cheese, and butter, and a lot of fish like salmon, cod, and trout. Those are the things that you really want. And that's not just me making excuses for not eating my vegetables either. Our current understanding of nutritional science says that eating vitamin A directly will allow your body to absorb more of it. If you think about it, this is actually where the British strategy during World War II is brilliant. Meat, eggs, and butter were the kinds of foods that were being rationed during the war, which led mm -hmm. to nutritional deficiencies that they had to make up for in other ways. Carrots aren't the ideal way to get vitamin A, but they're a great fallback. Though, for all of us in modern society who don't have to deal with shortages of meat, eggs, butter, and cheese, yeah, carrots, not near the top of the list when it comes to getting that vitamin A. So now, you know, I think after 80 solid years of folk science, we can finally update the saying. Eat fish, or eggs, or butter, or I guess liver, if you like it. Those will help your night vision. Certainly a lot better than carrots. Like I said, next time someone tells you to eat your veggies, drop that little knowledge bomb on them. Call it a knowledge blitzkrieg. And if you're thinking of making grandma's famous carrot cake, do it because you like the flavor. Now if you'll excuse me, I just earned back an extra plate at the buffet. One more trip to the carving station. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. And hey, if you enjoyed this episode about the series of lies that gave rise to the carrot myth, check out the series of lies that led to the creation of the McDonald's Chicken McNugget. That episode is on the left. Or, if you're hungry for more, load up your plate with the episode on the right, where I show you how to beat the buffet. You will not believe some of the ways that they try to trick you into eating less. And I'll see you all next week. Well, anyways, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you find this video very interesting to watch. Quite educational and a lot of different um, fun facts that you can learn from. Thank you so much, MatPat. Thank you so much to the team behind this video. You are the best. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. Thank you. And I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Subscribe. Thank you. Wow, this is just very educational. The more you know, I guess, the more you know. Anyways, if you do like this video, please show me to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And comment down below if you have any share of us. Don't forget to follow my channel and hope to see you all in my next video. Thank you so much. You are all the best for being so motivational, encouraging, inspirational. Your wholesome, positive words in the comments down below. Really nice to have your gratitude and appreciation. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're the best.